Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar from the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. So we have still got some dry conditions today but by tomorrow it is going to be pretty horrible for most as we start to see low pressure pushing in from the southwest with lots of thick cloud and plenty of outbreaks of rain. As we head into next week, the high pressure that's been to our northeast is going to lose influence and we are going to see more Atlantic systems coming in with a strong or relatively strong jet stream. Now, what that's going to mean is it's going to turn slightly milder, perhaps in terms of the surface and upper air temperatures. But it is also going to mean there's going to be a lot more uh, in terms of precipitation and cloud moving in. Longer term, as we'll see from the latest GFS, GEM, ESIMWF and the ensembles is still a little bit all over the place. And that is because, as we have mentioned numerous times over the past few weeks, we have got a sudden stratospheric warming that has taken place, and the zone mean winds are still in reversal. That is likely to have some propagating impacts throughout the next sort of four to six weeks or so. So that means there is an enhanced risk of more amplification of the jet stream, perhaps higher pressure blocks starting to develop. And of course, now we're into the early part of spring. We're not expecting anything too crazy. No beasts from the east, no major cold spell. What it could do, as I've said numerous times, is late season frosts, perhaps brief areas of snow, maybe across parts of Scotland, and just generally perhaps a colder and more unseasonable feel uh, over the next few weeks, next month or so. So that's why we're seeing this uncertainty in the long range as the models continue to try and work out what is going to happen uh, as we've got that uh, sun stratospheric warming propagating through the atmosphere that's going to try and sort of bounce around and push away the general westerly flow that is getting, uh, that is trying to push in over the next few days, the next week or so. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see that we still have generally dry conditions for many. Some rain across parts of southern Scotland, northern Ireland, and towards the border area of northern England. And then we've got rain for southwest England and south Wales. Apart from that, though, it is dry cloud is starting to build especially through this afternoon and evening as we are going to see all this rain across parts of france starting to spiral in it's because this low is moving in it's going to be very slow moving tomorrow so if you are without rain in the morning then you may actually escape most of the day but if you have got rain around it is most likely going to stick around for uh, the full day now, if you put on the temperatures around the middle of the afternoon, you can see mildest conditions across parts of England and Wales here. We've got the combination of milder air starting to push back in and still a brief window of dry weather, and that is culminating those slightly milder conditions. Further northwards, we've got the dry conditions. As I said, a bit, of, a bit of rain across southern Scotland and Northern Ireland, but we've got the dry conditions for most. But we still got pretty cold air in place, so it's a little bit chillier here. But tomorrow it is going to be turning milder for all. Um, may not feel all too mild at the surface because of the rain and cloud, but by Monday to Tuesday, maybe low teens is possible, but of course accompanied by a lot more precipitation. Now if you look at the latest UKV, you can see over the course of this evening, rainfall is continuing to spiral in from the southwest, and then it will push in further through the overnight hours and become pretty widespread across much of England and Wales, into the proper Ireland, Northern Ireland, and more for Scotland. You can see it comes in a few little pulses, so I don't think it's going to rain all day, but if you do see rain in the morning, you're most likely going to see more rain in the afternoon as these waves of precipitation move through. You can see those going to be pretty horrible for most of the day. It doesn't look absolutely torrential, so we're not expecting major issues with flooding or anything like that, but it just could be pretty miserable um, with long periods of rain. As we head through Sunday evening, hopefully the rain starts to peter out, but we still see lots of cloud and areas of showers around. But by Monday afternoon, thick cloud, a few specks of rain, but for most, it's another briefly drier period where we start to see rain pushing back in from the west as we start to head into Tuesday and Wednesday. As you can see, the Atlantic starting to get unlocked. 
The UK be definitely suggesting the eastern parts could see another couple of drier days there, but I don't think it's going to last all too long from the looks of the longer range charts, which are definitely suggesting the jet stream breaking through. The UK B definitely has had a tendency over the past few days to hold on to that high further eastwards and southwards a lot more than other runs have. So again, I will be a little bit skeptical of that and we'll have to see tomorrow and on monday whether we will hold on to high pressure in these and hold off that precipitation through tuesday and wednesday now due to put on the temperatures you can see through this afternoon temperatures reached perhaps 12 or 13 degrees in eastern areas we've got the, so the combination of some slightly drier weather and slightly milder air masses further north it's only mid single digits it's still relatively chilly as we progress into tomorrow, temperatures are actually not going to be particularly high. Yes, milder air is pu pushing in, but if you are ahead of or under or ahead of the precipitation across most of uh, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland, bar from maybe South Wales and Southwest England, it's still going to be sort of mid to high single digits under the rain, feeling pretty miserable indeed. As we progress into Monday, perhaps an isolated frost further northwards and into Monday afternoon, still chilly, maybe only 6 to 8 degrees where we've got some trapped cloud. But into Tuesday, milder air is starting to filter in, double digits further westwards and into Wednesday. Look at that, starting to reach those low teens. So maybe slightly more delayed than initially anticipated, uh, the milder air pushing in, but by Wednesday, UKV has got those temperatures around that 12 or 13 degree mark. Again, it's going to be linked to that higher pressure holding on further eastwards. So both things will go together. If that high pressure moves off a bit quicker, then the milder air will move in faster. But if the high pressure holds on like it does on the UKV here till Wednesday, then we could hold on to slightly cooler conditions all the way to Wednesday. But you could see why uh, I do think, regardless of what the UKV is showing, it is going to be turning quite a bit unsettled and milder next week. And that is because all the long range charts are very much suggestive of that sort of unsettled pattern pushing in. And you can see that high pressure holding off into the east there for a brief period early next week. And then eventually just look at that. Atlantic is unlocked through the second half of the week into next weekend. And we just see lots of areas of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. However, day 10 beyond, we do start to see something slightly different. And what we start to see here is high pressure building up towards Scandinavia, maybe even into the Arctic. Now, again, I don't think that's definitely going to happen. But what I do think we're seeing here is the effects of the sudden stratospheric warming, where we do start to see blocking potentially propagating through the atmosphere. Again, it's impossible to say exactly what we will see, but definitely suggesting something could be afoot towards the middle of the second half of the month. If we do put on the upper air temperatures here, you can see it's not going overly cold for the UK, at least initially, uh, but you can see if we look at the temperature deviation, some big cold pools getting pushed out of the Arctic. And there is a possibility one of those cold pools heads towards northern and northwest Europe. Again, it's something to watch, but I don't think we're going to see anything definitive for this for at least another week or so. And of course, we have had Three sudden stratospheric warmings so far this winter. We have had a lot of hype from um, myself included, I will admit that, of seeing some big cold spells at times. We have seen cold weather, but nothing on the scale we thought we could see because of what is going on in the stratosphere. Um, and in the end, we've not seen much from those sudden stratospheric warmings. It will be typical the third sudden stratospheric warming, the strongest one we've seen so far in the winter into spring is going to be the one that actually is going to have some propagating impact. So we will have to see, but I wouldn't get your hopes up too much at the moment if you are looking for something colder, but I wouldn't be uh, on the other side if you are looking forward to some early warmth, which wouldn't normally coincide with the sudden stratospheric warming, then I wouldn't be too disappointed at this stage because, as I said, we've not had that much connect between the troposphere and the stratosphere so far this year, but we will have to see if it does connect in the next few weeks. Now, if you look at the GM, it's fairly similar over the next sort of seven days, and then it does not again. Towards that day 10 period, it goes a little bit all over the place. You can see westerly wind continue to push in into next week, going very unsettled. And then towards day 10, you can see we come in between patterns here, 
rising pressure to our north, potentially leading into something similar to the GFS was showing, but equally quite a strong low exiting out of northeast Canada, which would most likely lead to a very strong jet stream. You can see this with these red colours here, very strong jet stream exiting northeast Canada. So it could be a bit of a battle there between high pressure trying to progress northwards and the jet stream trying to push in off the Atlantic. Again, we'll have to just be one to watch over the coming days. The signal that I said for the next week is reasonably unsettled, cool initially, but perhaps turning milder in the medium range. And if we finally compare to the ECMWF, again, very similar over the coming days, Atlantic getting unlocked. High pressure, though, may hold on further westwards, at least for a time this week, but would be pretty unsettled further uh, westwards with high pressure further eastwards and eventually at day 10 we still see that high pressure further north and eastwards again it's not strong enough to pull anything cold in or anything too substantially dry but what it is able to do is stall those lows essentially meaning all that rainfall is going to be dumped in the atlantic maybe a republic of ireland northern ireland scotland and wales and southwest england associated with that further eastwards drier but it could be a little bit chillier. We will have to see, as said, very small little influences could make some quite big differences at the surface. And finally, if we finish by looking at the ensembles, you could see this upper attempt just rising over the coming days. We could have another couple of dry days early next week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, uh, or sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, if we do see. Uh, the Atlantic getting hold, held off further eastwards, but I must say further westwards, for example, if we look at Exeter, precipitation is starting to come back quite a bit more. Yes, there could be a drier day here or there, but we're not expecting anything persistent. Go back to London, you can see our presence just said rising, medium term, precipitation starting to pick up as well. And then long term, as we progress into the final sort of two weeks or so of March, we do see those upper temperatures drop back towards average, some cold runs appearing, so similar to what the GFS was showing yesterday where it did go pretty cold indeed, and precipitation staying around a moderate amount. So just showing you the uncertainty we have in the future. If we do look at the sea level pressure, you can see high pressure is trying to hold on next week. Again, it could go either way. Definitely the last day or so, it's trended more towards high pressure holding on, but I must say very quickly that high pressure could break down and the Atlantic could get unlocked. If we look at Exeter, for example, high pressure for a time, but you can see it does lower by around 10 millibars pretty quickly. And finally, if we do compare to the ECMWF over uh, for the midnight run, we just have a look at that. Again, similar sort of theme. Average, maybe not quite as mild early next week. More cooler air masses holding on. Dry for another couple of days, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday there before precipitation picks up once again as we head into the latter part of next week. And perhaps could be fairly persistent as we head into the final parts of March. And you can see generally we are hovering in and around average, keeping it cool at times, maybe some briefly mild weather, but I'm going to be completely honest, if you're looking forward to maybe some early warmth, something we have seen over the past few years at times, it's not looking particularly encouraging at this stage. There's no signs at all of anything persistently dry and persistently warm. For example, next week we have a couple of days of drier weather perhaps, especially further eastwards, it's probably going to be pretty chilly under the high. No a chance at this stage of warm air masses coinciding with drier conditions. That's not looking likely at the next couple of weeks. And to be honest, from the looks of the long range charts throughout the rest of March, any proper spring warmth or early summer warmth, I think you'll be waiting till April or May for that. It does look like March this year is going to be an extension of winter, not in terms of snow and, and very cold conditions, but just in general, in terms of wet, cool conditions, definitely seeing an extension this year. And I said with the sun stratospheric warming impacts could even extend further I and mean, be maybe slightly stronger than usual. But I said, we will have to see with that in the coming weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.